Hello, I'm Amy the Funny Lady, and this is my partner Elusive, Ellie for short. High five. Good job. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about some common myths and mistakes that people make in caring for their rabbits so that you don't make them. And if you are new to our channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, then go ahead and hit that subscription button and the notification bell next to it so you never miss any of our weekly videos. So number one on this list of common rabbit care mistakes is giving your rabbit an unhealthy pellet mix. So when you're giving your rabbit their daily dose of pellets, you want to make sure that it is just those boring brown pellets. You don't want any of those colorful fruity bits or those other pieces of vegetables or dried, dried fruit vegetables that really should be treats and not part of their daily pellets. This will help ensure that your rabbit is still getting the nutrients and fiber and vitamins and whatnot that they can get from their pellets without having all of that extra sugary starchiness that is actually not all that great for rabbits. Those should be reserved to use as treats for rabbits and not part of their daily pellets. You also want to make sure you take a look at the ingredients of your pellet mix just to make sure that they are a healthy brand. Usually they'll have percentages of the different nutrients and vitamins that are in them, so you want to make sure it's very high in fiber, more than 20%, and then low in fat. My preferred brand pellets for Ellie is Oxbow. They have a good mix of the fiber nutrients in, in the pellet mix. I've checked all the ingredients and whatnot, and Ellie very much likes them. She'll eat them like treats, basically. So uh, if you're looking for a brand, I definitely recommend them. I get Ellie the Garden Select Oxbow pellets, and there are other brands too, but that's the one that, if you don't know what to look for, that's what I use, and they trust the Oxbow brand. A mistake that is very common among rabbit caretakers is that they pick their rabbit up too often. People want to think of rabbits as adorable, cuddly pets that you can hold and cuddle with all the time, but the reality is that most rabbits really hate this. Now there will be the occasional rabbit who likes to be held, but most likely all you're doing is scaring your rabbit and making them want to run away from you any time that you approach them because they'll be afraid that you'll pick them up. Because the thing with being picked up is it makes rabbits feel trapped. They have no way where they can go run away and hide if they feel like there's a danger coming. So if you hold them every time that you interact with them, then they start to associate you with that fear of not being able to escape. And then they'll start to be afraid of you and run away from you. So if you pick your rabbit up too often, it makes it very difficult to bond with them and become close friends. While I won't say you can never pick your rabbit up, it's still best to leave it to just occasionally. Instead, you should make most of your interactions with your rabbit on the floor or in some way that your rabbit is allowed to leave whenever they want to leave. So sometimes Ellie will hop up next to me on the couch or while I'm on a chair and, you know, she's, she'll stay on my lap for a little bit, but then if she decides she's done, she's allowed to leave. And that's kind of how you have to treat it. You have to make sure your rabbit has a choice in these matters. Another common mistake that stems from traditional old ways of caring for rabbits is keeping rabbits outdoors. In most cases, I absolutely recommend that you bring your rabbit inside. Outdoors, there's a lot more dangers, like there are predators that may try to attack your rabbit or at the very least scare them. There are insects that can spread diseases or infest your rabbit. And the temperatures, especially in the summer, are usually not great for rabbits, depending on where you live high temperatures can be very dangerous and cause heat stroke in rabbits. But more importantly, keeping your rabbit inside is what allows them to really become a part of your family and become an, a companion rabbit rather than just a pet that you have outside. Them living inside with you and becoming a part of your life allows them to, you know, spend time with you and bond with you. It's much better for your rabbit, for their socialization, and for their physical health. In addition to just giving rabbits the wrong kind of pellets, Many people have the common mistake of just giving their rabbit the wrong kind of diet. You might think like a pet cat or dog, you can just give them a bowl of dry food and then that, that'll be good for them for the whole day. But rabbits, their diet is actually quite a bit different than that. You want their main food to just be hay, grass-based hay. Usually Timothy hay is best. 
the pellets should only be a supplement to that. They're something that can add nutrients and vitamins that they might not get from the rest of their diet so that they can maintain their health overall. But even more than pellets, it's really important to make sure that your rabbit has fresh leafy greens every day. So you can't just give them dry food. You have to make sure that you get, you know, parsley, cilantro, leafy lettuces, uh, kale, all these things are good to make sure that your rabbit has a little bit of every day. I do have a video going over everything that you need to know about your rabbit's diet, including like, the amounts that you should give your rabbit based on their weight. So I do recommend you go and check that out. It will help and keep you on the right track. There's also another one for young rabbits who are less than six months, so you can go check out the young rabbit diet video for that. Another common rabbit care mistake is not getting your rabbit spayed or neutered. This is actually very important for their health. Especially female rabbits, they have a very high chance, somewhere around an 80% chance, of developing uterine cancer by the time that they're six years old. And the chance of them getting it just increases as they age. So it is vitally important that you get your rabbit spayed sooner rather than later preferably before they're a year old, but generally if you can get them spayed by the time they're two years old, then the risks of getting cancer are still pretty low. But even if you have a male rabbit, getting your rabbit spayed or neutered generally will fix a lot of common behavioral problems among rabbits. So lots of times as they reach maturity, around four to six months, they'll start to get more aggressive. They may start spraying, like peeing in places where they shouldn't, even if they're already litter box trained. They'll be less willing to bond with you. They'll be more destructive in their habits. So getting your rabbit spayed or neutered can usually help fix these problems. So that's one of the things that you want to consider when getting a new rabbit. Now, oftentimes, if you adopt a rabbit from an animal shelter, they will already be spayed or neutered, so it's not an added expense that you'll have. I always recommend for adopting rabbits, so definitely <laughs> check, check your local animal shelter to see if there's any rabbits there. Um, and usually, they are already spayed and neutered. A common mistake that people make with their house bunnies is they do not fully rabbit-proof their house. So if they let their rabbit out, they'll think you can just watch them and supervise them closely and you, you won't, your rabbit won't get into any trouble. But the thing is, rabbits are tricky. <laughs> They're little tricksters and they will find ways of getting into trouble even with you watching them, <laughs> even with you watching them very closely. They'll find a way to snip your wires, they'll find a way to get into areas you don't want them to get and then refuse to come out. So you want to make sure that you do a thorough job of rabbit proofing any areas that your rabbit has access to. So you want to make sure that you do things like covering your wires, making sure your rabbit can't chew on your baseboards, uh, getting mats to put down so your rabbit can't dig up your carpet, those kinds of things, so that you can make sure <laughs> your rabbit stays safe when they are exploring, but also, <laughs> but also you want to make sure that like they can't destroy your house, <laughs> especially if you live in an apartment or something like that. You don't want to lose your security deposit just because your rabbit came and chewed up the carpet. I have a video going over Rabbit Proofing 101 that you can check out. It goes over a lot of the basics and some of the things that are often overlooked when people rabbit proof. So go ahead and check that out if that is something that you need help getting started on. A common mistake that I see way too often on social media or other YouTube videos is when people give their rabbits a bath. Now, baths are not only unnecessary for rabbits, but they are actually pretty dangerous. There are a couple reasons for this. One, rabbit fur tends to hold in moisture. So rabbits who have a bath have a much higher chance of developing hypothermia because they just don't dry off very quickly. They can't just shake off the water like a dog can. So you definitely need to be careful for that. There's also the possibility, it's a low possibility, but they can also develop shock simply by touching the water. Since rabbits don't normally go into water at all, the feeling, especially of cold water, can have them go into shock. And shock for rabbits is actually pretty dangerous. They can die from shock. So you want to, make, you want to avoid things that can cause that as much as possible. Rabbit skin is also incredibly delicate. So when you give them a bath, the water makes their skin a little bit more likely to like tear. So they're more likely to get, get injuries and cuts and it can end up becoming serious very fast. 
So giving them a bath like this can be very dangerous if they even get a little cut. The good news is most rabbits really don't require a bath. They can, they do an excellent job of keeping themselves clean. If for some reason your rabbit gets dirty in a way that you don't, that they can't clean themselves up, it's much better to spot clean them. So get a damp towel and try to spot clean that area. You can also give them a dry bath using cornstarch. So essentially rubbing cornstarch into their fur and then combing it out with like a flea comb or something like that. That can give them a dry bath to uh, help if they happen to get dirty. Those are ways that you can help avoid giving your rabbit a bath even if they, they need some way to get clean again. The next common mistake that I want to talk about is keeping your rabbit in a cage. And what I mean by this is like a cage that is specifically sold for rabbits or small animals because like 90% of the time these cages are much too small and not actually suitable for rabbits. Rabbits are pretty active animals. They need space to hop around and sprawl out and just act like a bunny, have space to act like a bunny, even when they can't have access to a wider room. So I always recommend getting a pen, a, a play pen for your rabbit rather than a cage. This is why I always talk about a rabbit's enclosure rather than a rabbit cage, because I wanna make that distinction because enclosures are not only bigger, but they also give your rabbit space to kind of go up a little bit. There's more like vertical space and it's just a much freer way for rabbits to you know, hop around and exist during the day. Another thing you can do is essentially take the steps to free roam your rabbit. So this is essentially allowing your rabbit to have free roam of your room or your house without having to be kept in an enclosure at all. So Ellie is kind of a partial free roam rabbit. I do keep her in a larger enclosure when I'm not home, but generally during the day, she's allowed access to my room without any problems. Depending on your living situation and the personality of your rabbit, some rabbits will not really be able to be free, free roamed, but it is definitely an option to think about and to work towards to help your rabbit have the best, have the best living environment that they can have. If you're finding this video helpful, then go ahead and check out my newsletter. I give you lots of secret tips and tricks from everything that I've learned through the years of living with rabbits and working with rescue bunnies at the animal shelter. So feel free to check that out. You'll get a free PDF going over all of the basics of rabbit care and a little five day welcome package so that you have everything you need to take good care of your bunny. So definitely check that out in the description below. Another common mistake that people make is using a water bottle for their rabbit instead of a bowl. So bowls in general are much, much better for rabbits. It's a more natural way for them to drink and so it makes it easier for them to stay hydrated. A bottle kind of bottlenecks the amount of water that they're able to get and it can sometimes cause rabbits to just not get enough water. Now, a lot of times rabbits do like to flip over their food and water bowls. So doing this, you wanna make sure you get like a heavy ceramic bowl so that your rabbit won't be able to flip it over. And the only time that I would say that you should go for a bottle instead of a bowl is if no matter what kind of bowl that you get them, they continue to flip it over because when it comes down to it, it's better for your rabbit to have some kind of water than to have flip the bowl over and then you don't notice till a couple hours later. So in most cases, you want to get your rabbit a bowl, but if you have a bottle because your rabbit won't stop, you know, dumping over their water bowl, then that's not going to harm them. Just make sure you get a large water bottle with a bigger spout. Another common rabbit care mistake that people make is not keeping an eye on your, their rabbit's health. Rabbits are prey animals, and this means that in the wild, they would hide any kind of sicknesses or illnesses that they had so that they wouldn't get singled out and picked off by a predator. What this means for our pet rabbits is that it is really difficult to tell when they're not feeling well. So we need to keep a close eye on our rabbit to look for subtle differences in their behavior to know whether or not they might be sick. One of the ways you can do this is by keeping an eye on a rabbit's litter box. One of the most common symptoms of any kind of rabbit illness pretty much is there's going to be a change in the way your rabbit poops. So you want to look for a pretty consistent size and shape of those Cocoa Puff poops that you see. And if you notice any significant smaller 
poops or deformed poops, then you really need to like watch a rabbit's other behavior and think, is there something wrong with my rabbit right now? Are they sick? Something that you always want to look out for is not pooping or not eating. Those are two emergency situations that you need to get your rabbit to the vet as soon as possible. There are a lot of other subtle signs of rabbit illness and you can check out my uh, how to tell if your rabbit is sick video to find out some of the most common signs to look out for and keep an eye on. So go ahead and check that out if you want more information. The next one even I'm guilty of sometimes and it is giving your rabbit too many treats. <laughs> it is so hard when your rabbit looks at you with those adorable bunny eyes to resist giving them some yummy fruity treats. <laughs> but of course we need to keep these to a minimum because too many treats are not good for a rabbit's digestive system. In general you want to try to give them only about a teaspoon per pound that they weigh per day. So Ellie weighs about six pounds so I don't want to give her more than two tablespoons a day of treats. This way we can still make our bunnies happy and give them some yummy fruity treats like dried banana or some pieces of apple or something like that. We can give them these yummy treats, but we're not going to risk giving them so many treats that their digestion kind of doesn't handle it well and it causes some problems. The next one is not giving your rabbit enough time to exercise. Rabbits are very active animals, but they are not going to be active all at once. They are sprinters, not long distance runners. So that means that they're going to be really active for maybe 15 minutes and then they're going to rest for a while. And then they'll be active again for 15 minutes and then they're going to rest for a while. So when it comes to making sure they have enough time to exercise, that means we need to give them long stretches of time because they're gonna be resting for like half or more of the time that we give them to exercise. So it's best if you can give your rabbit at least four hours a day to just be out of their enclosure and exercise because then they'll be able to, between periods of resting, get enough exercise to maintain their health and still be happy, happy active bunnies. The, the next common mistake is not looking into the type of vet that you bring your rabbit to. Not all veterinarians know enough about rabbit anatomy to be able to treat them. You need to go to a vet that specializes in rabbits or small animals. Usually these will either be called small mammal veterinarians or exotic animal veterinarians and you want to make sure that they have experience with rabbits because rabbit anatomy is very different from cats and dogs and also some of the medicines, some of the antibiotics that are given to these other animals are poisonous to rabbits in some cases and in other cases the doses are just way too strong so you want to make sure that you go to a vet that will recognize rabbits needs and be able to help you with your pet. You want to go to someone who's not working from a framework of cats and dogs, but instead has very specific experience with rabbits. If you're looking for a place to find a rabbit veterinarian, then the first place I always look is the House Rabbit Society vet listing, which I'll link below. Um, the Rabbit Welfare Association Fund in the UK also has a listing, so I'll also put a link to that. If you go to these links and you can't find anyone near you, then what I would do is try to call a couple veterinary offices that are near you and ask for their recommendation for a rabbit veterinarian. Usually they'll be able to point you in the direction of one or two offices nearby that has a vet that can work with small animals. And the last common mistake that I'm going to go over is not giving your rabbit enough socialization. Rabbits are actually very social animals. In the wild, they would live in groups and be they would have friends and they would live together. So rabbits that are left alone without any kind of interaction with others all day are, are likely to become depressed and withdrawn or even aggressive. So you definitely want to make sure that you give your rabbit enough socialization and interaction on a daily basis in order to keep them happy. So oftentimes the best way to do this is by treating your rabbit the same way you would treat a pet cat or dog. Let them be a companion animal. Hang out with them, let them be in the same room with you and come up to you. You can pet them if they want to be pet. And even just hanging out in the same room as your rabbit really does a lot to help them come out of their shell and be happy with, your, with just your presence. 
of course you want to interact with them too like rabbits love to be pet training your rabbit is a great way to bond with them and and give them that socialization just making sure that your rabbit isn't left alone all day can do a lot for their mental health now, if you are not able to give your rabbit this socialization, then you really do need to consider getting a second rabbit to bond with them because it's something that rabbits do need. And in fact, getting a second rabbit is much better, <laughs> much better than human interaction. So even if you do spend a lot of time with your rabbit on a daily basis, it's important to consider getting a second one. Don't forget to check out my newsletter so you can get your free guide to basic rabbit care. And I want to thank you so much for watching. I do hope that I will see you next week.